These are all examples of polynomials, algebraic expressions made up of terms that we are adding or subtracting. We can have monomials, one term, binomials, two terms, or trinomials, three terms. A term is made up of variables and coefficients that we are multiplying together. So this is one term, this is another term, this is another term. So each term is separated by either plus or minus signs. I've listed three terms here, and within each term we can see there's a variable. So in this one we have an x, there is a coefficient, two, and the exponent on the variable is two. So in this one, we have a coefficient of negative three, and we have two variables, a and b. The exponents on each of those variables is a one. And then on our last term, we have a coefficient of one. We have variables x and y. The exponent on the x is two. The exponent on the y, if we don't see it, is one. We have one y. We can find the degree of any term by adding all exponents on the variables, so only the letters. So if this is my term, we would add together two plus three that first term has a degree of 5. If this is my term, remember if we don't see the exponent on the variable, we know it's a 1, so that term is degree 1. This next term here, we don't have a variable, so because there's no variable, it is degree 0. And then this last one, if we add 3 plus 1, we have a degree of 4 for that particular term. If we have a polynomial, we need to take the highest degree of any one term. So this particular term has a degree of 2, this term has a degree of two plus one is three, and this term has a degree of one plus two is also three. So we can see that the highest term is degree three, so that entire polynomial is a degree three polynomial. Algebra tiles are named based on their area. So this little square here, the easiest number to work with is a one. So we say that there is a base of one and there is a height of one. So if we take the area, one times one is an area of one. There's also often a legend which indicates which tiles are positive and which tiles are negative. So because the textbook tends to use colored tiles as positive, I just kept the same legend. So this would be positive one, and this would be a negative one tile. The shading determines the sign, the shape determines which tile we have. Now our next piece here, in terms of the area, if you were to take this little one tile and lay it along this side here, you can see that this is the same height as this. So we know that we have a height of one on that tile. And then how many one tiles do you think we could take and lay along here? And you'll discover that there is no whole number of tiles. There's also no benchmark fraction of tiles that we can lay along here. And that was designed purposefully to indicate that this is an unknown amount. We don't know the exact exact amount of tiles, so we can represent an unknown amount with a variable x. So now if we take the area, x times 1 is x, this is our x piece. So we have positive x and we have negative x. And then if you were to take this tile, you'll see that it is going to lie along here and give us the exact same dimension. So we know that this is x, and I'll tell you right now it's a square, so this is also x. You can take this piece and then rotate it and lay it along here. So the area of these pieces, if we were to multiply x times x, this is our x squared piece. Positive x squared, negative x squared. We can then use those algebra tiles to model algebraic expressions. So our first term, 2x squared, so it's a positive, so we need a colored, and then one, two of those x squared tiles. We then have two x's, so we know that the x is the rectangle, and because it's positive, we're going to have the green rectangle, so there are the two x's. We have a negative x, so that's one of the unshaded x pieces, and then we have negative two, so that's going to be two of the little unshaded one squares, and then we have positive 4, so that's going to be 4 of the colored squares. We can now go ahead and clean this up a little bit. So I know that one positive and one negative will zero out. So these are going to zero out. I know that one positive and one negative will zero out. One positive and one negative will zero out. So in the end, we're left with two of the x squareds, one of the x's, and two of the positive ones. That is our simplified expression. If the algebra tile has the same size and shape, it's what we call a like term. So we can see that the x's are like terms, the ones are like terms, the x squareds are like terms. Algebraically, we are combining those like terms together by adding or subtracting the numerical coefficients. So I can see this x squared, that's the only term with an x squared in it. So that x squared is just two x squared. We can't combine it with anything 
and just think back to your pieces. There's no other pieces the same size and the same shape. The X's, so these are like terms, I've color coordinated them here because we have the same variable, same exponent on the variable. They both have an exponent of one. Two minus one is one X. So the exponent stays the same on that term. It's the coefficient that we're adding or subtracting. And then here we have negative two plus four is positive two. So if you don't have algebra tiles, we're just going to combine our like terms together by adding or subtracting the numerical coefficients. All right, so let's take a look at one more. So this is an algebraic expression. We're looking for the like terms. So same variable, same exponent. So X cubed, this is an another x cubed. So I'm going to go ahead again and color coordinate these so that we've got x cubed and x cubed. We then have an x squared right here and there's no other x squared so that one's going to stay on its own. We have negative 1x and then we have 6x's so we're combining same variable same exponent and then we have a 4 and a negative 7, two constant terms. So now we're only adding and subtracting those coefficients. So we can see that 10 minus 2 is 8 and those are x cubes. The exponents stays the same if we add or subtract. 2x squared, that's our only one, so we can write that down again. Negative 1 plus 6 is positive 5, and that x stays the same. 4 minus 7 is negative 3. And you'll notice that we tend to line them up in order of degree. So degree 3, degree 2, degree 1, degree 0. Now with multiplication, we're going to build a rectangle. So one of these terms is the base of the rectangle, one of these terms is the height of the rectangle, and it doesn't matter which goes where, but you want the longest side of the piece to go along that black line there. So 3x, I just happen to put this along the top, and then 2x, that's going to be the height. Now to fill in this rectangle, we're looking for a piece that has a length of x and that has a height of x. Because this is positive and this is positive, positive times a positive, I know that that piece is going to be positive. So we can go ahead and fill that in and I'll just do them all at once here. So again, what piece has a length of X and a height of X? That's another positive X squared. What piece has a length of X and a height of X? That's another one. And then down here, what piece has a length of X, height of X, and you can continue on there. So we can see that we have a total area of six X squared. So when we multiply three X times two X, our area is six X squared. So you may have noticed symbolically we're multiplying those coefficients together and then we're multiplying those variables together. When we multiply two powers with the same base we add the exponents. 1 plus 1 is 2. So we do not change the exponents when we add or subtract but we have to change the exponents accordingly when we multiply or divide. So in our next one 10 divided by 5 is 2 x cubed divided by x squared. When we divide powers with the same base, we subtract the exponents. So 3 minus 2 gives us 1x. And we already spent a great deal of time in our exponent unit looking at how you would go about doing these. So reduce the fraction, move the negative sign up to the numerator, 3 minus 1 leaves us with two a's, and then 1b on top cancels with 1b on the bottom, leaving us with that b. We could also go 1 minus 2 leaves us with negative 1, so we're going to have that positive exponent by putting it down in the denominator. If you see a fraction, first simplify everything in the numerator, simplify everything in the denominator, then divide. We use the same concept when multiplying a monomial by a polynomial. So one of those terms is going to go along the length of the rectangle, and then the other one is going to go along the height of the rectangle. Now, because I have 2x, those are positive 2x, so they're going to be shaded. The negative 3x's are going to be unshaded. So when we go to put our pieces in, we're looking for what is a piece that has has a length of x and a height of x. So we know there's going to be a positive x squared here because we have a positive times a positive. Now when we get down here, we're looking for what piece is going to have a length of x and a height of 1. And then we're going to have a positive piece times a negative piece. So we know this will be a negative piece and x times 1 is just that rectangular x piece. So let's go ahead and fill that in there. So when we take these 3x's and multiply them by these 2x's, so 3x by the 2x's, you can see we get 1, 2, 2, 3, 4, 5, 
6, positive 6x six squared. And when we take those 3x's and multiply them by the negative 3 1's, so these 3x's times these 3 negative 1's, you can see that we end up with negative 9x's. And you may remember that that process is called distribution. So we're taking this term out front and we are distributing it to every term in the bracket. So here we have 2x times 4x, 2 times 4 is 8, x times x is x squared, and then 2 times negative 3 is a negative 6, and then x times no variable here is just the 1x. Now we have a monomial times a trinomial. So we're going to take that 4 and we're going to distribute it to every term in the bracket. So 4 times 5 is 20, and we have an a. 4 times negative 3 is negative 12. Make sure you watch the signs there. And then b, 4 times 2 is 8. And then we have a negative 6 times 3 is a negative 18. x times x is x squared. A negative times a positive is a negative. 6 times 2 is 12. And then we have an x times a y is just xy. And then a negative times a negative, remember that is a positive. 6 times 1 is 6, and then we have an x times a z squared is just that xz squared. And then in this last example here, if we have to simplify this, we can see that the first thing we're going to do is remove those brackets by distribution. So we're going to go 3a times 4a to get the 12a squared. 3a times negative 2 is negative 6a, and then negative 5a times 2a is that negative 10a squared, negative 5a times negative 3 is that positive 15a. Then, in order to simplify this completely, we now have to combine like terms. So we can see that 12a squared minus 10a squared, subtract those coefficients to get a 2, and then negative 6a plus 15a is 9a.